Gonna transition now. You guys are on screen, and I'm ready for a countdown. All right, uh, we will start in three, two, one. Plating was one, about to fail. Go. There's viscosity throughout the gel. Hello, everyone. I am well, Nate Shots Cats, I guess and I will be bringing you Halo anyway. Two. A game where a green space marine this kills aliens and doesn't afraid of anything. You get used to the With me, I and have okay. Distro Television. Test your targeting first thing. Please look I'm at the top light. I'm here to comment on the run. Now look at the bottom light. All right. Look at the top light again. That's it. Now okay. The bottom Is that light. all? Okay. If you want to introduce yourself, feel free. Everything checks out. Stand by. I'm gonna offline the inhibitors. Well, I move around a little. Get a feel for it. When you're ready, come meet me by the zapper. This run. Um, Nature's Cat is playing this game on Legendary, which is the hardest setting. Pay attention, because I'm only going over right now this he's once. Going this station will test your Can't recharging you energy that. shields. Yeah, you this is an auto-scroller that you can resilient. kind of Very speed up. Bingo. You gotta love games that really see, get you off running, kind of. You know? What I did there by pushing... If your that guy sergeant down, guns is cover, I save like probably three frames ish. That, he can hide I think that's me. the generic. You it doesn't really boy, save here, anything. Guns? I don't see any training wheels. And fine, basically, Johnson. I'm just trying to get him to his objective to go, so he can son. give me a little just shield remember, test take sooner. Slow. Don't worry. I pushed I Sergeant Johnson, this man in the white uniform, so, Johnson, to get him into the elevator a little quicker. Again, just to save a little bit of time of them walking at their normal pace. My ass. This well, level done without doing any of this is probably like eight. two minutes and well, forty seconds, maybe a little more. Maybe Lord Hood if you do all this, it's mid two thirties. Push him into the train, get him started, and now we do anything. Haven't seen it in years. So, as this sure said, I'm playing on legendary. It's the hardest vanilla category in the Halo franchise. Technically, there is Lasso, which is legendary, all skulls on. And skulls in this game, you pick them up in the map. I will actually be picking one up. Technically, I can pick up two. The second one doesn't matter. Coordinated fire from the Athens and Malta. Nothing. Uh, yeah. Can you? I'll turn you. Yeah. My mic up a bit. Apparently, uh, my mic is uh, super quiet. Oh, okay. Should be good Except now. People can let me know if that's false. Nobody's saying much, but I bet something big's about to happen. What well, yeah, about legendary? It's, I think it's important to know that in legendary uh, means that enemies are lethal and spawns are random, so Alert. the occasional death during the run is to be expected, like completely normal. Yeah, there's not been a single segment run ever of this game done deathless. And if there has, it's really slow because a lot of it is manipulating the spawns you get per death. So there are some areas in this game where I'm straight up going to die. It, it's sort of expected, and what I do for the next life is use that spawn because it's going to generally be the same set of enemies and I'll kind of improvise base off of that. So expect deaths, hopefully not an insane amount. What I'm doing right now is delaying a checkpoint. I'm on Cairo Station which is argued to be the hardest level in a full game run. I got a pretty bad spawn here but we might be able to work with this. Okay, so we're through the first part. That grunt spotted me and I thought it was gonna kill everything or alert everything to me. Luckily they didn't alert too quick. So I missed the plasma pistol pickup, which is crucial. I'm gonna have to uh, have this guy killed. Got him. And now we're going into the first hangar. This is a lot of combat really quick. This is sort of on a timer, sort of not. I can speed it up by killing things faster. And as I, you'll see me strafe a lot. That's to avoid enemy fire. So we kill the first few waves. They are based off of how fast you kill. The last wave, which is coming up next, is sort of based on a timer. So it should be coming up any second now. It's just a white elite and two grunts. And we're out of the first hangar. 
So now I'm gonna do something that you'll see hey, in a lot of Halo speedrunning, and I'm gonna kill a teammate. What is your status? Mainly because I'm a cold-hearted bastard, but it was to get that frag grenade that I just picked up. He'll drop anywhere between zero and two grenades. So I got middle RNG, which is fine. You want that for the next hanger. And after the first clear, he has to uh, look at the explosion. And there's a good reason for that. It's actually faster to look at the explosion. He has to wait for a dialogue, and by looking at it, it happens uh, faster in general. Yeah, cool guys do not look at explosions, but I'm not a cool guy, so gotta go fast or something. Hangar 2 is generally not too hard, but it's hard to make go fast. If you know how to play this hangar, then it shouldn't kill you too often unless the occasional grenade blows you up. Which, typically you want to manage the grunt spawns more than anything, because you can strafe like I was doing in the first hangar to get past all of the enemy fire in, uh, from the elites. I'm on the last wave now of this hangar. I'm gonna wait for this guy to come out. I want him to actually come out of the hangar so I can get his sword. You'll you'll see why. That guy's in a really awkward position. And it could spell doom, but hopefully not. Alright, he's dead and we have one more elite. You kinda wanna inventory this room. So we're out of the second hangar now. Uh -oh. So I pick up the sword. The sword is the most interesting part of this run. I didn't want to spoil it in advance. But basically with the energy sword, you can lunge at enemies and you can manipulate the game to your advantage where that's concerned. You'll see the first sword trick coming up. It's definitely the smaller, less... Uh, flashy sword trick. It's called a sword cancel. I just lunged over the enemy by canceling my sword lunge as it was happening and then hitting A. I just died but it's a quick revert because I got a checkpoint right up here. This guy's chasing me. And we should be okay as long as he doesn't follow. He sometimes will. Alright, so I have a white elite here who has a lot of damage, and like I said, Goldie did kind of meme me up a little bit. He shouldn't this time because I'm far ahead of him. Come on now. So we gonna be living for his... Ah! Gotta wait for these guys to die, and now comes the coolest sword trick. If I can hit him. My checkpoint's very close. This. I just hit a loading zone. Um, loading zones work in this game very interestingly. I can't hit sword flies. They patched it. Those damn meanies. So that was a sword fly. The button combo to do it is YXR. You switch from a longer range weapon when the reticle is red. And you have a few frames to trick the game into thinking that your sword is long range. I'm getting destroyed right now, which I expected in a marathon setting. But yeah, the trick you saw there we flew over the turret, that's a sword fly. It's a trick that is used a lot during the speed run because it's faster and you can skip some areas like that. Uh, you can see that a lot during the run, especially on Legendary. Also, I should mention that that yes, trick is yeah. not possible on MCC. It's not possible on the Xbox One version of the game, only on the original oh. one, unpatched. This elite's kind of trolling me. He keeps backtracking, which, I mean, if I hit my sword flies, it's usually not an issue, but... There, I hit a good one. Got to cancel down the hallway. So we should be living. I was almost on board when they showed up. Don't worry, man. We're on. So now we're outside. This is a somewhat new sword fly in the route. Thanks, Chief. I owe you one. I say somewhat. Uh, he just moved to a really bad spot, so I'm gonna have to kill him, unfortunately. Which isn't that much time loss. It's just I have to kill these guys, which normally I can get Sir, past them. Have the fire we have a bomb. Can you defuse it? 
Yes, but I'll need the Chief's help to make contact with the dead leader. Chief, get to the bomb, double time. Cortana, right, we're going into the drone fight, which is my least favorite part of the level. Uh, if you thought that was rough back there, this is kind of random at times. Definitely likes to kill me more than it should. Alright, that was a kind of bad kill. I use these frags and throw them off the ledge to kill the drones as they're flying up. You see all the carnage there. And after a certain number are killed, uh, this door right here will open. Looks like one of the drones is coming down. I really, okay, he didn't stick me, but he blocked me enough. So we try again. Still didn't kill everything. Required. Hang on, everyone. So I try to lure these elites out. And we are not in the elevator because I got grenaded. That's pretty rare. Like I Just said, to remind that the slide will be very random and it's a very, very difficult mission. It's known to be very reset heavy in a lot. This is, uh, this is just going swimmingly. But we'll get through it. The next level is a, a much needed break from Gyro, to say the very least. I'm going loud. Hang on, everyone. I feel like this, okay, this guy's just hanging here. Okay, we made it! First try, right? Run still on. Definitely first try. Run the main thing. So, I'm meleeing to avoid getting a checkpoint early. I want to get the checkpoint as late as I can because you can fail this and you want the revert to be as minimalized as possible. This guy's kind of blocking me. I don't like him for it. The first carrier. I'm trying to do an interesting little sword fly here that I'm missing because my sword flies were on point, but now they aren't. And this is one of the hardest sword flies because not only do you have to hit the sword fly, but oh, you also have to swap the weapons. They patched it. They 100% patched it, but it's okay. I'll mention now that I'm actually running on the unpatched version of the game, because despite the joke, wow, I'm really missing swordflies right now. But yeah, this is the only swordfly of this kind, the speed run. I don't know why I'm missing all these, but we'll uh, get through it. Don't worry, man. You got this. Don't worry. I really haven't missed this many sword flies in a row ever. It's a matter of like, we'll be happy if we'll be much better. This is very bizarre, but we hit it. Yay. <laughs> so I picked up the plasma pistol mid fly. That's why I kind of lined it up in that area. The reason I did that is that this fight that I'm going into is. Certainly a lot easier if you can Plasma Pistol and BR combo, aka the new combo. There are seven or six enemies in here. And you have just enough plus one shot to take them all out with a new combo, so you can miss one. But anymore and you need to get creative with the way that you kill the remaining ones. I'm just getting wrecked by this room. That's kind of a theme of this Cairo so far it seems like. Nate, just take a deep breath. It's okay. Alright, this should it's be just Cairo being Cairo really. 
and it's marathon mud happens. Okay, so we have one left and just gonna need a combo and then we're gonna be out of the level. Alright, so we're on outskirts. Outskirts is a pretty cool casual level and the speedrun is Blink especially interesting. Me, There's a trick that I'm about to do that is pretty well known and benefits the speedrun a lot. I just did a grenade jump out of the map. Normally I'd go down to that area that I'm looking at right there, do like 15 minutes of fighting, and then have to go down under where I'm currently at. I'm saving myself probably a total of 25 minutes by just jumping out of the map and onto the roofs. It's called rooftop running. There are some checkpoints in Master Chief Collection for things that are outside of the map, so the developers have known about it. There's a skull in the game that I don't want to pick up because it actually Chief, negatively impacts the speedrun. So the reason the that I just kind of stood behind the, the white elite yeah. there is that when he aggros, he pulls out a sword. And... I mean, I think you can kind of assume that I'm going to do a sword trick of sorts. So I just did a cancel there to get past the enemies a little quicker. It's a lot safer than walking past them, which you can do, but... Depending on how the elites aggro to you, they can kill you pretty easily. So blowing up the turret that he went on back there was a way to make him aggro faster. The highest concentration of Covenant troops is directly and now we're in a carrier. ghost I don't think they first vehicle in the game. I take a specific the path there to the avoid the sniper jackal killing me and all of the enemies that were on the left side of that little area noticing me. Makes everything a lot easier. The rest of this level is pretty straightforward. So I shouldn't have a Cairo-esque uh, time with it. Position. This tunnel links up to the bridge. Yeah, there's a lot of driving on this mission. Yeah, next two missions are just driving simulators. But it picks up again pretty quickly after that. I don't think they expected us to be here. Nice, I got Magic Marine. So, I go back to get the Warthog. The reason I do that is that this entire drive, if you're in the Ghost, can 100% kill you. And on Legendary it does. The easy route is to take a Ghost, but I want two teammates in a Warthog to be my bullet sponges. And the Magic Marine thing there, it saves a few seconds, it just looks cool. He kind of warps through the Warthog based on how you get him out and get in the vehicle. We call it the Magic Marine. He's a, he's a pretty dank dude. So now just kind of driving through, having a good time. By the way, for anybody interested in speedrunning Halo games, the entire FPS franchise is on HaloRuns.com. If you want to see leaderboards, who's streaming, and whatnot. A lot of cool people there that have done a lot of cool things to the games to break them. Highly recommend that you check it out. The Covenant must be trying to regroup. Don't let them. So this part right here that I'm driving through with these vehicles that are called Shadows, this is the part that would usually kill you on Legendary. But as you can see, I took a decent amount of damage, but I survived. Mainly because they were focusing on my teammates as well as me. So I only took somewhere between a half and a third of the damage I normally would. So we're coming up to the end of the mission. This went pretty well, so... We'll be in for a fun time on the next one for sure. It's a very RNG heavy mission with some very tight execution. I'll mention that this last area I'm coming up to definitely has a good chance of killing me, but my checkpoint's usually close, and I can take a path that I just took where I kind of line myself up against that side wall ramp thing, and that avoids that turret shooting at you, which is very nice for the run. 
So now we are on Metro. Metropolis is a very cool mission casually. It's one of the only times you would take a tank. Go on, sir. But tanks are slow. We don't want to be slow. So we're taking a Warthog. AKA the Halo car. I take this Marine with me, but not the other one for a very specific reason. The other one has a rocket launcher. And why you'd think, hey, that's really cool. He can take down all these enemies that are up on this bridge. That is true. But he can also shoot rockets at the ground or attempt to shoot through, like AKA to the driver's side of the Warthog. And it has a good chance of killing you, which is not fun for the run. So I take one to prevent damage where possible, but not the other. Again, to prevent damage where possible. I would like to mention that uh, Nesh just mentioned that before, but I would like to highlight that That's this uh, Metropolis, this mission is very execution heavy. Like the movement he does in the tunnels is very precise. May look a bit strange, but in the way he drives through, he will make surviving me. much more likely. Yeah, so we're coming up to the tunnel right now. Another the turret person is going to get out at some point. They got out early. Sometimes they can last throughout the whole tunnel. It sounds very uh, kinky, but not intended. So I wasn't supposed to get through where I just did, but I did anyway. You have to kind of ramp up in a very precise pattern while enemies are shooting at you, including a sniper. For the record, snipers are one-shot kill on this game to Master Chief, at least on Legendary. Everything else, they're not too big of a deal. But you aren't supposed to get through there in a Warthog, but speedrunners find a way, always. So now we're coming up on a part that I definitely do not like. This is the Wraith section. There are two Jackal snipers on this little bridge right up here, along with two Wraiths. I have to board a Wraith which I got first try, it looks like. Also, you notice the explosion that just occurred. I actually threw a grenade into the hull of it as I, uh... Oh god, I just wasted an extra grenade. I need to find one. So I should probably add that Jackal's Knife of the Hill is legendary. I am famous for being a one-shot killer. So if nature just gets hit by a Jackal's Knife or shot, it happens during uh, speed runs can be quite random sometimes. Okay, so now I actually misplayed that because my grenade exploded way later than I thought it would. So I have to hope, okay, this person is my prayer to the RNG gods answered. I got an extra grenade. I need two grenades up here. More is definitely preferable, but not mandatory. I'm gonna do a cool trick. I didn't think they'd send us if you see that big giant spider-man uh, it's called a scarab and this mission casually you walk to the end of a little bridge and you eventually get on it after killing a ton of enemies I'm actually gonna listen to an audio cue real quick so I'll be quiet for a second I don't think it's stopping get your heads down and we are on to the scarab. So if you do the grenade jumps that I just did, one onto that little antenna part, and then one onto the scarab at a very precise time, then you can get on here earlier. And the way that this mission ends is kind of weird. Uh, when it's played casually, it makes sense that they would do it the way they do, but I spawn enemies, I come back up top here, and you can actually go to the very front of the scarab. If I can get down there, that'd be cool. There we go. And these three enemies down here, there's one on the other side that I need to kill as well. These are the only required enemies. And those pilots are no pushovers either. Alright. There's two and there's three. And if you think of it casually, it does make sense that that's all you really need to do because those are the last three enemies that you're likely to spot if you get to the very end. 
But if you get on early, you spawn them, and then you just go there. You have a free shot at them. Nobody can see you, but you can shoot through for some reason. And you just finish the mission. Killing teammates here, this level is the first mission that you're the Arbiter. Basically, the storyline is you play back and forth between the Master Chief and the Arbiter. Arbiter is a Covenant elite. Uh, he was kind of in charge in the first Halo game, and the Prophets, who are his religious leaders, don't like him anymore. But he becomes the Arbiter, has to do suicidal tasks, and I get to do them. The reason I killed teammates back there was to open that door quicker, and to avoid dialogue. Saves a good amount of time. Also, this little mini optimization I just did, you can press the elevator button from the other side and get it moving earlier. I don't have any good spawns to do a sword fly, which honestly <laughs> might not be the worst thing at the moment, but I can still cancel down to this button. Uh, that's required to continue the mission. And now I can go out of the map a little bit to avoid being shot by these guys. Eventually they'll stop focusing on me, which is cool. They'll focus on the Phantom that's coming in. He's actually my ally now. And I just have to kill all of the enemies in this hangar in order to spawn the next wave and progress. The next spawn is tied to the Sentinels dying. So, I'll get three Sentinel spawns, I just need to find them. And that should be the end of the hangar. Now we're going into the infamous YOLO halls. They kind of got that term because you don't get a checkpoint too often. But, they're not too bad depending on how you play it. I made it through the first one, now we're into this little open... I don't even know how you describe this room. I didn't get shot too much, so... Okay. I'm no shield, so I probably won't get a checkpoint here. Sometimes you can get one going into the second hallway. Yeah, but, very rarely. But not today. Alright, so I camo at a kind of precise time there. I should probably mention that as the Arbiter, you can camo. It's a feature that the Master Chief can't use. Um, unless you take the Envy Skull throughout the run. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll get into that. But yeah, Master Chief's uh, superpower is a flashlight. Really cool. I don't think I got a checkpoint, at least I didn't see one, so I'm not going to go for a trick here. You have a frame-perfect trick to sword you that guy through the glass uh, as a grenade explodes. Okay, this guy's coming into the room. That is not cool with me. So we're gonna have to take a safer route here. But it clips you through the glass and saves somewhere in the range of 20 to 25 seconds. I don't have an exact number. Alternatively, you just go through the door as intended and get in this vehicle. This is a Banshee. It's the flying vehicle in the game. Don't really use them too much. This game doesn't have too many vehicle levels. So that was Arbiter. That was actually a pretty good Arbiter, all things considered. The the last three missions were pretty solid. Yeah, I gotta get the uh, get things going. So I hit a sword fly now. I promise. I told you guys I can do it. They just patched the game for me. Is all they did but I unpatched. So this mission is Oracle. Uh, spoiler alert, I guess. This is the introduction of the Flood. That's the bodies I'm killing. I'm killing them in order to avoid the upcoming enemies uh, reanimating their corpses, which you'll see occasionally in the run. And I look up at the ceiling there in order to prevent lag. These guys are all camo, and camouflage teammates will lag your game pretty hard, which in essence slows you down. 
Killed some grunts there to avoid dialogue. Saves probably you 10 seconds. Close. Maybe not even. Come out so we may kill you. <laughs> now I'm just waiting for enemies to spawn in. This guy's a hologram, by the way. But he is going to be someone we deal with. Don't you worry. He is the heretic leader. Basically the guy who's anti-covenant. Trying to get a movement going. So these little guys are the Popcorn Flood, aka Infection Forms. They can do a good amount of damage in in bulk, but single-handedly they're not too bad. I'm trying to kill a few to uh, open this door behind me. I need to find the last set of spawns, I believe. Alright, that should be enough. Yeah. So now we go on to the elevator. This is by far the most exciting part of the run. I say that pretty sarcastically. This is an auto-scroller. Yet an auto-scroller that can kill you a lot. So I'm just going to be fighting my way down this. Uh, after I kill these guys, I'll sort of show what you guys would probably think in theory is a way to skip this, but nobody's found a good way to skip this elevator. At least not as early as we'd like to. So I think that's the initial wave. Uh, down there, or maybe down here. That is where I need to go, which you can actually get all the most of the way down there by just parkouring a little bit. Yet there's a death barrier right over the door which goes away at a certain point because obviously that death barrier once you get down there wouldn't it would soft lock the game so they sort of turn it off at a certain spawn we'll get to that in about a minute and a half i think is the rough estimate so for now it's just killing flood um hanging out with my buddies they can kill you sometimes it's pretty fun when they do really helps me out. So, I just look at these two, uh, I, don't even, I wouldn't even call them pillars, but little structures on the side. That's where the flood will always spawn at. So I just keep looking back and forth, seeing which side they're on. Uh, that one's hiding behind the body, so I can't hit him. But at this point, I don't know if he can actually fall down without getting a fall timer. Uh, I don't want to get into this fight because if your teammates hit you, they can insta kill you. So sometimes on this elevator, you just avoid anything. Just because of your teammates, not as much the enemies. So we're on the next to last wave of this elevator, I believe. But we will see in a second. The way that you can tell if it's the last wave or not. I actually want that guy to come down. Oh, he has carbine ammo that he dropped. So I'm low on ammo, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. So if I see a bunch of spawns in a second, which looks like we're getting a lot of uh, these guys, the flood, take that ammo. And Sentinels spawned, that means that I'm on the last wave, and I can drop down after the elevator starts moving again. So I'm gonna get in position. My teammate's gonna be kind of my sacrificial lamb during this situation. And the Flood and Sentinels will fight each other, so I'm pretty safe here. I can drop down now, and I will survive. Drop down again, and we're at the bottom of the elevator. I'd like a checkpoint here, which I just got. Do a nice little cancel down the hallway. And we're in lab fight. Lab fight's pretty annoying. Distro, I don't know if you wanna tackle lab fight. <laughs> yeah, I try. Lab fight is uh, known to be one of the hardest, if not even the hardest, depending on opinions, uh, rooms of the speedrun. Um, at the beginning, there are certain enemies you have to kill to spawn uh, further ways, but the problem is that um, it's incredibly difficult 
Uh, at the beginning, I think there's like four enemies you have to kill. As you can see, a carrier forms uh, most of the time, as always. Maybe combat forms. Carrier forms are those uh, big ones that explode when you approach them. And after he kills uh, the initial wave, the first one, there's three, if I'm not kind of mistaken, carbine elites. Again, uh, the carbine, it, it's, it's very lethal. But he's, uh, I have streamed it, but I think he got through it without problems. Yeah, I didn't good. die, which is nice. And after you kill those enemies, there's a uh, ran, I think there's a lot of flood spawning for a minute or so. And he just has to fight them and survive. Yeah, but so the most, there's the actually a uh, somewhat new find to make this room a little more consistent. It doesn't save time in theory, but it can, depending on if enemies hide from me. I'm not going to do that because it requires me basically standing still in a corner, and this game certainly has enough auto scrollers to, you know, get me going in the morning. Uh, I don't really have a good term for how boring it can be. So I'm just gonna fight it out. It's more entertaining, in my opinion. And I mean, I just waited on an elevator for how many minutes? Do I really want to wait more? <laughs> but this level, after you spawn this wave, which is called the combat wave, these guys are all referred to as combat form flood. Uh, it's on a minute timer, and it'll keep continuously spawning things, so you're doing something the entire time. Uh, it looks like the minute's up, and now this door opens. Okay, I died, but that's not a big deal because of my checkpoints right here. Yeah, it looks like a really solid lap fight so far. Okay, so we're through. That went decently. Not spectacular, but after the minutes up, that door opens, there are five enemies. And the one thing to note about heretic grunts is that they definitely don't afraid of anything. They will not back down from a fight. Uh, these guys spotted me while I camoed, so I have to kill them, which isn't a big deal, it just loses 10 seconds or so. But if I hadn't gone back to kill them, they would have absolutely wrecked me as I was going up there. So I camo through here to get past. Turns out it was only like one or two grunts, which isn't a big deal. And now I kill everything in this room to activate a cutscene. And we are good. So I do a little parkour here. This saves time over the casual route, and it's a lot safer than running into... I don't even know how many flood spawn. I do a grenade jump to get even closer to this elevator, which is the next requirement in the level. Now I get to cut the station down that we're on, and basically get to the heretic leader. He was in that room where I killed the sentinels and everything, but you can't actually kill him, even if you sword fly to him, which is very easy to do. You actually can't do anything, he just goes behind this door that cutting the station will unlock magically. So, I'm at this uh, pillar, or cable. There's three in the room, and I'm at it before I can actually hit it. So I wouldn't be losing time by taking a slightly weird path here or anything, because it's on a somewhat timer in order to hit all of these. The first one is not, the second and third are. As soon as we hit all of them, the enemies kind of stop paying attention to you, look at the sky, and you go back down. So going into the fun part of Oracle now. The first half of this level is very boring, but the second half gets very hectic. It has a lot of sword tricks. And the room I'm coming up to now is my least favorite room in Halo 2. 
You can do a sword cancel here. Uh, I tried it once, I didn't get it at all. It depends entirely on the Sentinel or Flood Spawn that you get in this room, whether you can cancel across the scap or not. Uh, I might be able to work with this spawn. Yeah, this looks good. So, I got across the gap. Second try is not bad at all. And I activate the next cutscene before two sword heretics come out. Now I'm in a Banshee for 10 seconds. Very, very exciting. They really could have just made this a cutscene, but nah. Gotta let you drive for 10 seconds and then crash your Banshee in the end. So that Banshee is the shortest survivor in the game, probably. So now we just walk through. This area isn't too bad. Sometimes you can get spawns down there, and if I had grenades, I would do a grenade jump. And I've been killed by the enemies that did spawn after grenading myself and being weak. Missed my sword claws there, but I want to kill this guy and his buddy up here in order to get a checkpoint. So there's the checkpoint. I'm gonna hope that I can get a good enemy lineup. I didn't really, but it's not a big deal. Now we're going into the boss fight. Now this boss fight's pretty easy. Uh, my record for sword flying on this run has been um, not the best, but it requires three sword flies. Not necessarily required, but they make it a lot easier. This is the heretic leader. He spawns in one of these four twos. There's two on the other side, so you just have to figure out which one he spawns at. How did the prophets buy your loyalty? Now you have to listen to his dialogue for a little bit. Normally he clones himself and drops down. Or was it the promise? So, going to listen to the dialogue for a second. Get him back up the tube, and that is the first hit. He'll come down though, you have to figure out which one he is, and it can get uh, difficult to say the least. But where are the weapons, Arbiter? What was the result? So I'm swiping him constantly, he only goes up in the tube after you hit him a certain amount of times, or do a certain number of damage. And sometimes he gets stuck, which can be bad, but if you are conscious of it, then it doesn't lose you much time. So this is the last hit, I can just keep swiping him and it'll kill him now. This was actually a really good oracle overall. Well, I think I only had one quick death and then I missed the cancel once, so not bad. So now we're going into a really cool set of missions. This mission is Delta Halo, your Master Chief again. Back to not afraiding of anything. Um, Major Scott is going to rocket it to Jackal. Across the map. Yeah. The reason why he does that is, um, I think you can explain. Yeah, we'll get to that in a it's... second, but first, okay. the map boundaries on this mission aren't painted too well. So I just did a simple jump that anyone can do. You don't need to, like, unpatch, do anything. It works in the Anniversary Edition as well. But you can just get out of the map, and it avoids. It avoids a lot of things. So the rocket that I just shot there is kind of odd from what I've noticed lately. You don't actually need to kill anything with it, but it certainly makes things more consistent if you do. I don't think I killed anything. There's a sniper jackal in that area. He's actually coming out now, oddly enough. So you can see that I didn't kill him, but what I did was, I don't even know how it works. I just get a checkpoint up here and it makes this trick that I'm about to do in case I fail it. Like, you see I just got the checkpoint. I don't normally get that unless I shoot the rocket. This trick can definitely kill you, but I still want to do it because it's cool. It saves like 20 seconds over the backup of it. So, we're getting in this ghost now. We're gonna 
line ourselves up on this little ramp. Throw a grenade, start boosting, and... I barely missed it. So that's why you want this checkpoint. It saves you from having to deal with the checkpoint way back there, which is about a 20 to 30 second time loss. This trick also has a little bit of RNG in it. It, The ghost can, uh, when you have a part of it explode, that part can be random. And that can also affect the way that it flips. So some flips are better than others. I think that time it was my lineup to be perfectly honest, but we look, yeah, we're in there on this one. So second try is fine. So I'm at, I actually skipped about 20 minutes of gameplay on this mission. You actually have to do a lot of wave fighting in the normal route, and then you would get a Warthog, which not a lot of people know is the casual route. Then you get a scorpion, you take out some wraiths that I was able to despawn with the out of the map section. And you go from there. This is probably the hardest part of the level. I'm driving through, there's a lot of ghosts here that are trying to kill me, as well as these turrets. So I want to avoid damage where possible. Careful, we're coming up on another spot. And uh, we do you made want to it. The spawns here? Uh yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, um, the nation's castle is going down the ramp, or went down the ramp, with stream delay. The, there's a few ghosts that can spawn, and the location where they spawn is very random, and the number of can be anything from one to three ghosts, or even more, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, um, depending on the spot. Also, I just want to mention, I picked up the Envy Skull by doing that grenade jump that I did. If you saw the screen flash, that means that the skull is activated now. Uh, this gives Master Chief the ability to camouflage. And it's very useful for two levels in particular. The end of this level for sure, but the next level is definitely very tough and benefits a lot from the Envy Skull, and then we'll get into a really cool trick later. But yeah, for the spawns of the ghosts, that I drove past, it can be zero to three. I've only ever seen three on the second half of the drive. I got a one and one split there, which isn't too bad, but it Good. can, uh, no word about they can block you a lot and be problems. It's odd. The Covenant so I fly up here all, to the top of the tower. Case. I had to camo there a little earlier than I wanted to, but it shouldn't affect anything. If I get up here, I'm able to despawn two elites, and it also benefits me a lot because I can conserve my rocket ammo and carry over. The way weapon carryover works in this game is if you're going into a map that either doesn't have a weapon, or one of your weapons is... Um, oh man, I just got sniped mid-fly. If your weapon's empty, then the game will give you a brand new set, but I don't want that because I want to keep the sword. Otherwise, I'll have to grind for another sword. Uh, this is the hardest trick in the game, in my opinion. I can agree. I will just hope that I hit it. <laughs> There's really nothing more to it. This is a very precise sword fly, which you do with the beam rifle. You, knew, you want the beam rifle for the uh, second half of the level. Alright, I'm just missing my aim is the problem at this very point in time. So that's the first sword fly, and I missed the cancel unfortunately. The elite started moving when I didn't want him to. Alright, yeah, this spawn won't work. I have to do this very quickly and camo at a very precise time. It would help if I was hitting the sword fly. So I hit the sword fly, but my camo had been broken, which is unfortunate. I'm unfortunately really bad at this trick. 
they're runners that can get it every time. So the elite there just stopped again. I need him to go to a certain spot for me to cancel off of. Ah, uh, man, just missed it again. It's unfortunate. I think the problem there was I jumped too soon on my swordfly. You have to kind of delay your jump. Missing the swordflies again. We'll get through this. Once we get through this, we should be pretty home free. The rest of the swordflies are certainly not as precise. Again, on the uh, fly. Like I said, this trick is very tough. I would have liked to hit it in a certain time frame, but we'll we'll trudge through. Ironically, though, I haven't hit it first try once. <laughs> the uh, fly itself. Ideally, you hit it within two tries, and have the jackal not notice you. Getting a lot I of. Remind uh... Uh... Oh, you can go ahead. Remind us to why this trick is so difficult. It requires a good and precise movement. The aim has to be in point. You have to hit the sword fly. You have to have uh, good spawns, like the time where the enemies come out uh, from back of the wall is random. Sometimes they come, much, uh, come out way too fast or way too slow. Um, and all of that has to be on point, and you also have to hit the cancel. It's a lot of things at one point that have to go correctly in order to hit this trick. That's what makes it so difficult. Also, yeah. as mentioned before, snipers are always one-shot kills, legendary. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a rough go at this trick, for sure. Alright, I didn't get spawns that time. That was actually the first time I didn't get spawns. But, there is a pseudo backup that I just did not get. You can go to the other side. It's also random. I sort of prefer this version. It, it's kind of just pick your poison between the two because the enemies can spot you in a different way from over there. Additionally, the hitbox of the Jackal can be a little uh, funky, so if it looks like I'm on him but my reticle isn't lighting up red, then that's just kind of a side effect of that. Yeah, so, tried the backup again, I got alerted enemies, so wasn't able to do it. All right, let's let's get it this time. They'll unpatch sword flying for me. It'll be glorious. Come on, you got this. I'm also jumping way too early, unfortunately, which is kind of like muscle memory. Alright, he just looked down kind of, and it affected his hitbox on that last one, which I may have hit the fly on, but I guess at this point it's 
unknown. They can do that though. So we're just gonna revert on this one. We'll get it, I swear. All right, this one looks good. And I missed the cancel. So we're on the gondola first try. We did it. This still ended up, despite how obnoxiously bad that went, uh, taking less time than it would have to do the casual route, if you'll believe that. Normally you have to go around that entire structure and this gondola ends up departing. You're actually supposed to get on that gondola, which takes more time to get here. This phantom that, I don't know if it already came in or not, but a phantom comes in, drops hunters, and we have to kill them. Then this moves again, and we finally get on it. But we can intercept it halfway here. I got a nice checkpoint for this fight up here. So, if you activate this at the center point, you spawn the enemies that should be on this gondola. But you're already prepared for them, which is nice. Which means it was either built this way on purpose or was created by some other And let's kill these guys. This drone was kind of being a uh, a jerk. Melody is asking is this piece of Xbox version? This is the original Xbox version. Xbox 360 is emulated Xbox 360. You know, the, the PC version doesn't have full flying. Alright, I, I choked that pretty hard. Decent amount of time lost there, but it's, I mean, compared to the board itself of the gondola, we in there. This light couldn't have been formed so additional drones spawn in. Also, I want to kill this guy as my main attack. priority, but my aim got switched over to that drone, which cost me. But yeah, you want to run this game ideally on the Xbox or Xbox 360 to get this all the tricks. This tricks are cool. And I think that's everything. If this starts moving, which it did, we're good. Then we gotta kill these guys. Now I'm lining up for a very cool sword fly. Probably the coolest in the game. If you'll see me positioning myself against this, then you can probably understand where this sword fly is going. Uh, as soon as I get to a point where I can have my reticle red on this turret grunt, we're in there. But only then. So it should be in a second. And I just missed. But that is fine. We get a checkpoint right there. And you angle yourself up to the top of this temple, which benefits you in several ways. You don't have to deal with a few jackal snipers immediately. So I was able to use my camouflage to avoid getting sniped immediately by those guys. And now, once everything is dead here, I'm able to get Cortana's dialogue and this little underwater elevator comes. The reason I stayed up there to kill everything though, is that I didn't want to spawn a set of drones, those little bug things that were flying around in a few of the levels and earlier on this level. For some reason, if you stand up top, it despawns them. But you can kill two things before getting to the top area. So that's why I start shooting the fuel rod before I get up there and kind of jump back. I've 
So now we get a little bit of underwater storytelling from Cortana. She's basically telling us about the guy we're going to fight soon. And there's not anything I can do to speed this up. I can just hang out with these fish. They're very well rendered in two-dimension graphics. Also, one cool thing about this area is that on the Master Chief Collection version of Halo 2, this is fully rendered and looks pretty cool. It's kind of like Atlantis in a way. But in old graphics, they didn't put a lot of effort in down here, and it shows. So I'm going to be swiping my sword here for a bit. I mean, it's cool looking and all, but the reason is... A, I want to delay my checkpoint. B, I don't want to get a checkpoint as I was doing that jump, because the checkpoints freeze you for a very small amount of time. And that would have completely eaten my jump input there. So I just saved myself that extra second. It ends up being if you fail. Swordfly did this pretty cool. You sort of fly off the sleeping grunt, and you get to the very end of the room. This room is not as nice to deal with, but I might have decent spawns here. Yeah, it looks okay. So I wanna, I wanna focus on killing those guys, which I did not succeed in, but my checkpoint's close. I'll just camo through this time, because he kind of moves in a weird position. Yeah, also, this room is uh, can be quite random, because the elite can spot you sometimes right at the beginning. Um, yeah, that's so why I take the beam how, rifle. What kind of spawns you get, you have to play differently. So now we're in another underwater elevator. I've noticed that on this one, it's more common to get fish clipping through the elevator. So we'll see if that happens. If it does, then this is world record, absolutely confirmed. If not, probably still world record. Yeah, this is world record either way. Yeah, just the boulder. A let's be real. A very well encrypted message from the prophet of truth. Listen to this. Your haste has right, so here come the fish. of our covenant. Threatened our grand uh, I will desire. go for Mount Cancel. Alright, fish clips through. It's the run, boys. It's the run. Only to mercy we, and did the run we did it. We did it. Truth, mercy, regret. Free profit so coming up after I'm done with this is frankly, hopefully an attempt at a trick called Mount Cancel. It doesn't save a lot of time and it's... The failed attempt at it does it's not anything that I'm probably going to die, and even if I do, it's a very quick revert. It requires a few things going right here. Mainly these enemies not spotting me as I get past them. So it looks like they spotted me, so these guys might be coming up a little early. They are, which isn't a big deal. What I would have attempted to do is use the ramp I jumped up to get past this completely. It's a little mini mountain hill-esque thing and if you get it it's called mountain cancel saves like 10 seconds but looks also cool. very difficult to execute i wouldn't say so much difficult to execute um if you know the timing for it it's pretty consistent it's just getting the spawns for it you, can sometimes be the issue yeah that's so good. We're approaching the main are random now. Spawns are random, As and the if the enemy is in that sort of room, spot you, you can't really I'll do it. Alright, what's this guy doing? Oh. Alright. So this guy is, uh... Oh, he's just a blue elite, that's not bad. So he was boosting away from me, he wasn't having any of it. But this guy's a white elite, so... I it's going to take three shots on him. Enemy health is based on their color and rank. So the white elite took three shots with the um, rocket there to kill. I want to focus more heavily on this run than anything. 
So, it takes three shots to take out a white elite, one to take out a blue elite, and two for a red elite. That is the order of their health. I got a blue and a white. But the white elites also recharge their shields faster than anything, so you have to really focus on them. <clears throat> Gotta kill everything on that gondola in order to survive and continue on with the mission. Now we're going to regret fight, which is definitely the most RNG heavy part of the run. I do a little sword fly to get there a little quicker. Kill some things down here so they don't screw me up because I actually can't go back from this cutscene. One thing, one of the things that happens in Halo 2 that doesn't happen in Halo Combat Evolved is you can double revert. The way that it works is the game thinks that you're in an unlivable situation if you die five times really quick. So it reverts you to your previous checkpoint. But when you hit a level chapter, that doesn't happen. So. This fight is extremely random, and you can definitely not get checkpoints throughout it. I have to hit this old man five times. You cannot get away with... Oh man, I have a good spawn for him. Let's swerve this. Uh, it's looking bad for survival, but we'll make it. You can only hit him, unfortunately. You're not allowed to rocket him or grenade him or anything. So that's why you see me kind of uh, taking a weird pattern here. I'm on the fourth hit now. Deathless would be absolutely nice. And it looks like we might be in there for Deathless. Yeah, we're in there for Deathless, that's really nice. Not a good regret because of the start, but the fight itself went really well. That's the hardest fight in the game, for sure. The Phantoms are turning around. The fleet is preparing to fire on our position. We need to get out of So here. if I had died, I would have been back outside and had to hit him five more times. I only saw maybe one Plasma Rifle Elite spawn in there. You want as many Sword Elites as possible for that fight because they can't hit you from long range. So it worked out pretty nicely. The fight's just a total run killer for pretty much anybody, any skill level. Now we're on Walking Simulator. This mission is... <laughs> I don't even have words for how stupid I think this mission is. Probably the worst in the franchise. Absolutely the worst in the franchise, actually. You spend the entirety of it, maybe like six minutes of it, actually, just walking and shooting walls and really not killing anything. And then you go into a three to four minute just RNG fight with RNG spawns, a lot of killing, not a lot of checkpoints, and it's just not fun. So, I wish I could spice this section up a, a bit, but it's it's pretty tough. You don't have a sword, so I can't do any cool sword tricks. So again, I'll make my obligatory mention of HaloRuns.com for all of your Halo speedrunning needs. You should go there. Yes, somebody said Halo Runs. This guy is kind of interesting, but I don't know, it gets... I guess as a first time viewer this is an interesting encounter. This is an enforcer, and the way this specific enforcer works is if I hit that button, he just blows up. Normally you need to kill them a little differently than I just did, but... That one is literally tied to this button being pressed, as well as all the sentinels that came out of these little holes. This guy's a little neat too, I guess. He blinks. I'll focus on his eyes so you guys can see him do that. There you go. That was, that was cute. Little dead monkey. So now I wait for this little gondola that I'm on to cross over. 
the abyss. There's some cool tricking you can do out here, but it's never going to be useful for a speedrun unless I'm horribly mistaken. This Enforcer I actually have to kill, and I have to kill him normally. His death is tied into level progression, so unfortunately it is mandatory. I can't get away with like avoiding him completely. Taking off his legs and then sticking him is typically enough to do the job, so he's dead now. This door up here should open. I got a mini super bounce there. Also, that wall there was pretty cool. I guess now I can take the time to talk about screen burn, because this one is pretty notorious, or this area is screen burn. If you see random artifacts on the screen, that's what happens with Xbox to Xbox 360 emulation. <clears throat> Technically this is a little bit faster to run on 360, but I play it for preference of controller and console. Proceed to the objective. We'll hold down and it's a lot easier can. to stream from than Xbox, but the artifacts Suppress are previous fire. loads that basically don't go away. Eventually they will, but it takes a bit of time. So it looks pretty neat. It's not anything really important though. The hallway I just went through is called Carrier Hall. It's very annoying because there can be shotgun flood there that will just wreck your day. Shotgun flood are about the only real problem for the first half of this level. Because they can essentially use the shotgun as a sniper rifle. And it's very unforgiving. I've been sent back three to four minutes with no checkpoints because of that hallway, so it's pretty nice to get through it first try. The rest of this should be home free until the end of the mission, or yeah, end of the mission, a little RNG fight. Yeah, Nash, just FYI, I'm uh, taking care of the chat, you having solid commentary so I don't, I'm not talking much. If you want me to say something or the specific part, just tell me. Alright. Gotcha, gotcha. But so far you have had some Negative, commentary, so... They are not covenant. Yeah, the nice thing about this run so far is only two levels, definitely the hardest levels, have gone just terribly wrong. In my normal runs, they, they aren't too bad. They can be, but usually I reset on the first mission a lot so you don't see that as poorly. And then Regret Fight and the Cancel of the Gondola are just tough. There's no really good way to put it. So, the rest of this game isn't too bad. I'm crouching and sliding down the ramps there in order to speed it up. For some reason, the physics in that section specifically work so that you go faster by sliding at this strange angle. And I don't know if it's a placebo or not that I crouch, but it seems like crouching also affects this positively for me, so. Also the reason that this is turning back and forth and back and forth is that the fall timer in the game will kill you if you go to a certain spot or fall a certain amount, but I'm able to negate that with the uh, little ramps that I slide down there. Okay, none of those guys died to my grenade. Not a problem, but these guys can definitely be an issue. This is the only sword fly in this, uh, this mission. Alright. So we had a uh, rough go about it there, but... We'll see how this goes. There's... Oh man, I'm getting chased hard. Alright, so we're in the uh, RNG fight. It's very fun. You can get it started earlier based on how fast you kill a certain set of spawns. I think that was everything required. Yeah, as soon as he says, Arbiter, what are, what are you doing here? You're on the waves of spawns. 
so you can speed that part of it up, but the rest is all up to killing. Also, I think I just heard a rocket launcher. Rocket launchers are nice until they're aimed at you, pretty much. Yeah, when well, you have them, they're nice. What? It's nice when they spawn because you get them, but if they kill you, then there's nothing you can really do. Except, yeah, there was a rocket launcher, so I'll pick that up. And it will now be my weapon of choice for a bit. By this section of uh, Sacred Icon is also very unpopular to say it kindly. Most speedrunners don't like this mission. And the ending uh, section, like the weapon spawns, the weapons the flood carry can be quite random. It can be lethal too, depending on your luck. Yeah. Ideally, you get a lot of the elite flood, which are those guys that I just killed because they're easier to headshot and not a lot of shotguns. If you do get rockets, it's okay as long as they don't aggro to you, which is kind of RNG. I I don't really have a good way to describe the chances of it. It's not super common that they target you. Yeah. Also, have more rockets that I didn't have to kill. That's nice. So this part is very skill intensive, I should probably add that too. And from what I can see, it's going pretty well. Uh, yeah, I think it's deathless so far. But now I said that. That's over, we're going back 20 minutes. I'll try to find my VR, which I finally did, but it took a while. I thought I put it further up than I did, but you don't want to be in this fight without any weapons. Also, one of the tricks I'm doing with these fatties which I wasn't able to do there because of teammates, but actually it worked out is I grenade them as they fall to the ground and it kills all of the infection forms that they blow up into. Just missed that. So that makes it easier because those are corpses that reanimate. Or they reanimate the corpses I should say. And that just means more enemies you have to kill, which, why would anybody want that? Let's be real. Okay, the Phantom is already here, which is nice. This went very well. Alright, I think everything's dead, so the level should end on time. Yep, there we go. And now Quarantine Zone. Another driving simulator. This is an interesting driving simulator though, because it, at its best, the level is about eh, maybe two and a half minutes, maybe a little less, of actual gameplay, followed by, well, the biggest auto scroller in the game. I think the series, unless you technically consider the level Coastal Highway in ODST an auto scroller, because it kind of is. But you can actually, uh, I'll just wait until I get to it. The driving here is... The route's pretty exact. With a little bit of leeway. The only spot that you don't have too much leeway is coming up, so let's hope I get a checkpoint. I didn't, so that's... Doesn't bode well. Those two rocket flood can be very annoying. And run killing. Luckily they didn't kill me. They would have sent me back about a minute, because if they shoot a rocket at you when they can see you, which is why I camoed to avoid that being a scenario, uh, the rockets will lock onto your vehicle, which is really fun, because it's an insta-kill, and there's really nothing you can do about it. You can't strafe out of the way of it. By the time you hear that the rocket's tracking you, you can't get out and avoid it, so you just kind of hope your checkpoint's close. Luckily it wasn't an issue. So another enforcer, they can actually pick you up if you're in a vehicle and crush it. 
if you're able to get past him, then it's not really anything to concern yourself with, because that's really the only spot it's likely to happen in the run. So, let's see. It looks like I got spawns here. I shouldn't have gotten out, but I did. But I got a close checkpoint, so it's not a big deal. I could have played that section a little better. Also, they just broke my camo as I uh, got back into my vehicle. So I'm actually just going to get out this time and do what I should have the first time. There are enemies that can spawn up here. It looks like they're spawning a little late. But if you're in a vehicle, then they can board it and kill you pretty quickly. So I just got out and take this ghost as the best alternative. Doesn't really lose that much time. Yeah, depending on uh, how your ghost is positioned and what enemies you get and how... Yeah, it's just a lot safer. So... I got out my vehicle camoed and got back in quick there because one of those warthogs was a Goss hog. It shoots some... Um, I, I don't know how to describe it better than Goss turret shots, but they're kind of mini rocket launchers that shoot in a straight line and they can insta-kill you. This has been a pretty solid quarantine zone so far. Now we're at the auto scroller. So this gondola is normally a five minute fight that's really hectic and a lot of enemies spawn but if you get on top of the gondola then as you see I'm about to drop down and nothing can do anything to me up here the flood that are all there they don't even know I'm here now it's kind of interesting that my AI also doesn't react. So take your bets in chat on who's gonna survive longest. This guy has a sword, this guy has a single plasma rifle, this guy has a double plasma rifle, and this guy has double needlers. Take your bets on who's gonna survive longest. It's gonna be kind of funny to watch because, like I said, my teammates lose their AI once I'm up here. So once these guys uh, are unleashed, which is, it's gonna be soon. I'm uh, gonna take a little longer, you guys. Let's go. My team doesn't know it's coming yet. It'll happen, though. They always come over. Alright, so we got one... We got two for sword and one for everything else. Alright, there's one. So he spotted them. Now these guys are all gonna start coming over. That guy just got pushed back, which might actually benefit him. Double Plasma might have just survived, literally because of that hit. Yep. So, Double Plasma was the winner. Congrats, Double Plasma. Good job, Xano, on the guess. So now all I can really do up here is obviously take all the donation comments that have been pouring in and watch the flood do just random stuff. Sometimes they'll dance, like this guy, he's got some good moves right now, but I think he can really step it up a little bit. These guys aren't doing too much. They eventually make their way over here, which is where I want them. We have a 420 donation from the Dual Plasma Elite. And he's saying what what what. Ah, nice. Thank you for the donation. Really helps me out. <clears throat> so now I'll just watch these guys again do their dance. Like I said, this is the five minute auto scroller, but the next level and subs the subsequent levels after it are really cool too, so it's worth getting through. This guy's got a cool dance he's doing. I like this. A few of them are doing it. That guy is also joining in. I think he he saw this guy do the dance in front of him. Was like, ah, eh, you know, looks like a pretty cool one. We're gonna start uh, doing the I don't, I don't know, name a good dance. I mean, I, I guess maybe they're dapping. Is the, is that the 
that the trend with you fellow kids these days? Ah, uh, floods these days. <laughs> Back in my Hopefully day. I get Seizure Flood. I hope so too. Seizure Flood's really cool. Sometimes they'll just go completely insane. And <laughs> there's no better way to describe it than they're, they're having a seizure. So at, at this point we're about a minute away from doing a cool sword fly. It's slightly risky, but we're still going for it because I'm not a sissy. Doesn't look like I'm going to get any seizure, guys. Rip. Oh man, I just... I missed commentating this guy's cool move. He just did like a spin. Nice little 360 no scope. With his lack of weapon, it looks like. <clears throat> so we're getting not ready to do the sword fly. We need to get into that structure over there. Which you can go that way. It's a lot safer, but... Do people really want to see safe stuff in a marathon? I don't think so. That's why I do all the cool strats. I actually took that way safer than I even meant to, but we won't talk about it. it didn't happen. You survived, right? Yeah, nice. I survived. I just, uh, just I just did uh, like the babyest of sword flies, <laughs> so. If he had missed that fly, he would have lost a few minutes. It, it can so be anywhere up to it. five minutes. It can send you to the very beginning of the auto scroller again. All right, so get ready for cool tricks. Also, didn't check for camo because I'm not a sissy. So you see me quitting out of the game and dashboarding. I'm not quitting. The run is not over. This is, um, I'll explain the mechanics before I explain what it does, but you'll probably be able to figure it out on your own as I go. So Master Chief with the Envy Skull is not the intended game design. Obviously, he's supposed to have his flashlight that I mentioned earlier. Yet, I still had the Envy Skull activated. Now, checkpoints, the way they work is they remember the state of Master Chief. So, since I camoed before I got the checkpoint, I'm going to logically be ca camo when I get back into the game. So, what I did was I dashboarded out to remove the skulls, which if you dashboard it removes any skull that you have at all, and all the effects. Now, I don't want to get too much into it while we're on this loading screen, but I'll just say that you'll see what happens and it makes the hardest mission in the franchise, arguably, at least in my opinion, probably the easiest. And by now, yeah, I've, I've probably given away what's what the result of all of the mechanics I just explained is. I think several minds will be blown in a few seconds. You have a fully camoed Master Chief right now. The faster you can kill those brutes, the better. Gotta kill that guy. The enemies cannot see me. They don't react to me unless I run into them. But otherwise. I can play through this mission and focus solely on execution. Alright, that guy should have died, but he's about one shot there. Right now I'm going to attempt a despawn. I line up with these lights up here, and I hope that they're symmetrical, which they are. And since I'm in basically the exact center of the room, the level doesn't know where to spawn enemies, so it just skips a few waves. It looks like I did get it, so that's cool. Saves a good amount of time, even with camo, because these are waves I don't have to deal with at all. Uh, this is a spawn that I do have to fight. He can't skip this, unfortunately. So the trigger to spawn the next sequence is two enemies have to be alive on the bottom level where I killed everything, and then these two spawn. 
Uh, we're gonna hopefully find the carbine. There it is. And I want to get into the exact setup I was, but basically quicker. Because this despawn is very uh, tight timing. Let's see. Looks like I can still get this. Uh, this is the second despawn. Definitely a lot harder to get, but I just got it Put me down second on try the the on a quick revert. So that's cool. It also despawns the rest of the room, so now I can hang out with Cortana. Hey, that prophet, there truth. she is. He has the index. You've got to take it from him. Solid. Let All right. These doors. Probably banned from Twitch so, now for showing that. You guys didn't see anything. Cover your network. eyes, boys. He doesn't what it looks like. Well, we literally didn't see anything because you're invisible. Right this way. Nothing happened. Well, Illuminati confirmed. How can our eyes be real? If mirrors aren't real, right? Jaden Smith, reversed <laughs> thoughts. That was me. So, I have full grenades, which is my only concern at the moment. Thank Mr. Skeletal, doot doot. Since I have full grenades, I can literally just walk through this. The enemies still will not see me, which is really nice because this area is total pain. At least to do fast. The amount of time it takes to set this up, like dashboard and reload the level, is about a minute 45. So, theoretically, this level can be done faster without this skull, but the IL world record on it, which IL stands for individual level, and it's how like, all the Halo levels are tracked, is still uh, about 45 seconds slower than a pretty average Gravemind with camo, and that's including that minute 45, so... It's definitely worth doing marathon safe kind of strat. So we're in prison. Prison's hard to do fast, but we'll attempt to go fast. This guy needs to come out. Looks like I got pretty good spawns here. I don't know where the secondary spawn is, it looks like it's under me. There's three levels of this prison, and what you need to do is, uh, you have to clear everything in waves. So, <clears throat> this is the first technical wave. I need to kill all of the enemies to start doing all of these, uh, marine saves. They're locked in this prison, they're supposed to help me, they die, it's whatever. Want to backsmack him, so he's all nice and friendly. This is the first prison cell. Uh, everything on this level comes down to you being invisible, so it's easy, pretty much. Listen up, Marines. The chief's hunting a prophet, and you're gonna help him kill it. Come to the middle level, chief. One more group of Marines. So that's one out of two, and now we clear the second batch of Marines. That guy usually doesn't aggro to you, but not a big deal. Alright, so now I'm getting ready to leave the prison. That's all of the Marines, Chief. I need to kill up to, I believe two enemies can survive in order to activate the next thing I need to do. So I need to pay attention to dialogue from Cortana. So as soon as she says hostile reinforcements, which she just did, I go down to the second level, I crouch in between these two sets of lifts, for X amount of time, and as I go up, you can see all the carnage and guns that fell to the floor, and that is the despawn. 
kills everything that comes down the lift and it also saves probably 20 seconds. I've never really timed it though. But essentially the lift deloads so all the enemies drop to their death. Now the rest of the level is pretty cool, it's just all sword tricks. Including a pretty cool one coming up. That's one of my favorite piles in the speedrun. Yeah, Gravemind's second half is really cool. So, the fly I'm about to do... At least hopefully. There we go. I'm a little high up so I need to land along those pillars in order to negate my fall timer. But, that fly across the gap is really cool. I killed the brute there in order to basically de-aggro the sword elite that he was fighting because if you get into their crossfire, that's a very likely chance that you're getting insta-killed by the sword. So now it's a little bit of just walking on top, top of roofs to get to my goal faster. That grenade jump saves maybe a second, but why not do it? A few more cancels here. I'm gonna try to cancel off of these drones. I want to kill one of them so he's not in my way, and then see if I can get a good cancel down this hallway. I got a decent one, but luckily that drone opened this door for me so I don't have to wait. So there's a uh, high charity, the city. I, I guess that's technically the city. I might just be on high charity and forget the name of it. Yeah. But it looks pretty cool in the Master Chief Collection edition. They really did a good job of rendering it. So this mission in the storyline is basically where the brutes and elites get into a civil war, sort of. So I'm going to actually be in the middle of the civil war. I won't be on one side or the other. I'll just be like the bystander. Let's see if I can do swag cancel. Uh, the jackal's not even in a spot. If that jackal is where he normally is in the run, then you can occasionally get a pretty cool sword cancel. Apparently I can't jump either, but it's okay. He didn't see it. <clears throat> and you can get to this area I'm at now. Wow, well, the positioning was really bad. What was Jackal even? Yeah, he sometimes runs up. Not a big deal. I usually don't get it anyway, so... It is what it is. Up here, I'm going to attempt a despawn, which actually doesn't benefit you in any way. It's just the cool sword fly, because you don't need to kill the enemies that I'm despawning by doing this, and I nailed it, so. I jumped over the trigger of that bridge to spawn two hunters and... Is it two elites? I don't even know. I don't pay attention to them. I think it's two... Uh, I'm not sure anymore. I think it's two elites, yeah. Yeah, speedrunners are just so used to skipping it. Uh, looks like everyone's dead up here, so... In this area, you need to kill enemies in order. That order does matter, and I think there's a drone there is. This drone needs to die before I can, uh... ...continue with my killing. I want to kill the brutes last, because... ...there can be reinforcements that spawn if you don't, which loses a little bit of time. It's the Commander and Johnson! As soon as you get Cortana Dime Log, you're pretty much Don't on a timer for the end of the mission. You just get to do a few cool sword tricks. Alright, I could have uh, died there, but... Could have died there again. <laughs> Alright, we're just gonna kill him. So now I just wait for the level to end and we're out of Grave Mind. Unfortunately, by doing the infinite camo trick, I lose Envy Skull for the next and final Master Chief level. Which isn't that big of a deal. 
but it's definitely worth the time save on Gravemind in what it loses on High Charity to not have the Skull. So just a little sword cancel off there to avoid going around a ridge that had like five-ish, maybe four brutes. They'll kill you most of the time unless they don't spot you because of your invis pattern. I don't know why that grunt was throwing that grenade. I kind of wanted him to die in order to get grenades from him. So this mission is called Uprising, and if I'm not mistaken, the individual level record record for this mission is the shortest one in the whole Halo franchise. Uh, yep. This is the shortest mission. But because it's also it's very tough to do fast, so don't let the yeah. time of it deceive you. <clears throat> I'm going to take this mission True. a bit safer than I would in a run by waiting for camo. Normally I wouldn't have camoed back there, but sometimes those jackals can really uh, destroy you. So I got the max spawns here, and I could actually die because of it. I did die because of it, and now I'm back here. So that was probably the worst, that was absolutely the worst energy you can get. Okay, so we'll just go through it again. Not a big deal. Wow, that was unfortunate. Four Brutes. Yeah. Four Brutes is ultra rare there. Like, the amount of times you see it in a run is ridiculously low. Normally it's gonna be like yeah, one. Yeah, I've never seen that. Uh, I didn't even get... No, I got one, but he had already walked out the door. <clears throat> I'm waiting for camo here. So I can do a sword cancel uninterrupted by these guys. I don't want them to spot me. I got a pretty good cancel here, so... I should not need to worry about getting sniped. I can jump on a little branch of that tree and get out of the map. And what that does is it allows me to hit a certain trigger that extends a little too high. And that trigger may or may not be the end of the level. So normally you're supposed to go down this little winding area down here. But we don't do that in the speedrun. We just crouch right about here. And let me hit it. No, not good. There we go. And that is the end of the level. It's pretty nice. Because it makes one of the longer and harder missions about two minutes on a good pace. That was about three minutes because... I got the uh, bad spawns mixed with a bad checkpoint, but still way faster than doing it the intended route. High Charity is probably my least favorite mission in terms of actually speedrunning it. I almost always die on this mission a few times. Uh, I grabbed the sword, that was extremely important. I'm also getting chased really hard. But I should be able to survive. Yeah, it looks good. So that was one of the hardest parts of the mission. Solid. So you got through the first time? Yep. First try oh, on the hardest. Well, one of the two hard parts. I'll disable this lift once you reach the top. That'll slow Yeah, down. this is a very, very difficult section. Um, again, I'm delaying a checkpoint here by sorting. I don't remember if I explained the way it works with checkpoints, but you can delay checkpoints infinitely by two actions, jumping and uh, meleeing. So I choose meleeing on that one because it's just easier. But it gets me to this fight quicker. And unfortunately, I kind of expect to die on this fight most of the time. Alright, so now I'm going to throw some grenades to make these guys back off, which it looks like they're doing, so that's nice. Should be able to survive this, and we're past my least favorite part. Uh, I 
got some pretty bad spawns here, so I'm dead, but it's a quick revert, which is nice. You made through the hot pot pretty fast, nice. The whole mission's just... I don't know, I don't have a good way to describe this mission. It's just brutal the entire way through. A lot of things can go wrong and typically do go wrong. Ironically enough, and in a full a game... This can be very random. Yeah, this is actually going pretty well so far. If I get a checkpoint here, then it's even better. I tried to... Okay, I got a checkpoint. That's really nice, actually. <laughs> this room can be total RNG. The enemies didn't spot me, so people who've never seen this speedrun probably think I'm just lying and that room isn't hard. But that room is when the enemies spot you, just nearly impossible. Security systems in this part of the tower are particularly robust. Alright, I got four rockets, which is pretty nice. <clears throat> I want to kill that guy for the next room. The rocket launcher is definitely the best way to take out enemies in this next room, which is another one of the insanely hard parts. So we're just going up this elevator. You can pressure launch, which means you clip half of your body into it, and it basically pushes you up to the very top. Unfortunately, that's a little random, and you don't always get spawns when you do that. Alright, so we look primed to survive this first try, which is really nice. Ironically enough, if I had not done a run earlier today to practice and I first try this next fly this would have been gold by about a minute off of my actual splits because I'm that bad at this level but this has gone really smooth so something has to screw it up this next fly is kind of uh, it's very important to hit and we nailed it that was a sub-5 high charity, which not a lot of people can do. And not yeah, many people can do it consistently at all. That's very, very tough. Requires a lot going well. So now we're on the last mission. Uh, I'm in a Spectre. This is the first and only time you'll see me driving one of these. Well, I, I'll be driving it again. But that's uh, to be explained later. I'll preface this mission with I have two safety checkpoints because one of the tricks later in the mission is so necessary for a speedrun that you just kind of have to do it. And rather than restart the level and kill my run, I'd rather just show it off because it's also pretty cool rather than watching me just waste five minutes on the last fight of the game. So I'm going back to where I originally was to despawn the enemies up here. There have been a lot of variations of this. If you just saw the wraith up there just kind of disappear, then that's what I'm despawning. But it's been found that just driving back and then going to the intended route is sufficient to get that despawn. So the reason that I carried over weapons, you can do a uh, launch with your ghost across this gap. I just jumped off the map, but luckily my checkpoint's really close. <clears throat> you guys didn't see that. It didn't happen. I don't like the gap launch because it kind of relies on these two enemies here and their position. And even that's still not enough to save you. I just got pretty unlucky there. Again, nothing happened. Carry on. The hunters have come to our aid, Arbiter. They will fight by our side. Alright, 
so... I screwed up the sword fly again. Not a big deal. This checkpoint, like I said, is the best you can get, 100%. <clears throat> Unless there's a checkpoint that I didn't know of in this room that I'm entering right now, then that is truthfully the best checkpoint I could have gotten. Alright, so we hit the sword fly. Uh, this could actually be bad though. Yeah, that was bad because of where I landed. It's pretty unfortunate. I could have played that a little differently, but usually you land over the brutes completely. So we'll give it another go. Oh man, just landing on the brutes. That's really unfortunate. We'll get through. This part's usually not a trouble part for me, but it has to be in a marathon. And I understand. I'll I'll give the game a pass, you know. Alright. They didn't kill me. That's very nice of them. We made it. I'm gonna wait for a checkpoint here and then Try a cool sword fly that I hit. Gets you right to the jackal. <clears throat> so again, with the theme of delaying checkpoints, I'm gonna delay one until I get into this room, just to minimize the time loss if I do die here, because this part's a little strange, to say the least. I need three brutes in this jail to die in order to activate the next area. Get a camo here to uh, hopefully get past. Got past very easily. Now I gotta kill these guys in order to trigger a cutscene. Gonna hang back a little bit, let them uh, do their thing. Now I just wanna scavenge for weapons for the final fight and grenades. So, Sergeant Johnson is in that. He's a human, and I am the Arbiter. I am a dino. We are now friends, because the Arbiter in the storyline realized that the Prophets were wrong about activating ah, Halo, which is a ring that kills everyone, in theory. So, what I did by going back was I despawned three wraiths. This level, I guess its theme is that spawning wraiths by just going back and then forth. You know that you get it when you hear him say his little line of dialogue, and it allows him to progress sooner. So let's see if my my specter is still here, that's nice, so I don't need to use a backup. Run is still valid, Kappa. Um, the ending of the run is very interesting again. That Spectre was putting in some work. So, the reason that I grabbed the Spectre, and that I said it's a very interesting vehicle at the start of this run, is it can uh, it can climb some some very steep hills that it shouldn't be able to. It has a very weird. I, I want to almost say set of physics, but I don't know if that's the term I want to use. I'm allowed to use it to get up this little shoulder of the mountain. And the goal here is going to be to get this into the final fight. That's the only other backup save I would ever need, is in case it doesn't get into the fight, because we'd be pretty screwed and we need to do a very RNG terrible kill of the final boss and probably nobody wants to watch that so we're just gonna take this in do some cool tricks that I'll explain when we get there and it'll be fun 
So I shouldn't be able to get off the thing I just did, but the Spectre is a tank, not literally. Okay, it's it's flipping. <laughs> I just wanted to get out of its path there so it didn't kill me. I'm on a timer right now. I need him to get here and blow up a door so I can take my time. This would be a sick time to read all those $69 donations. But we only have a little bit of time before we get into the final fight. We have a $69 donation from Sano Highway. Shout out to Nate for the commentary. Oh, nice, nice. Good donation. So by looking where I'm looking right now, what normally happens is there's a door that's blocked off for the final boss, and the specter, or not the specter, the scarab, opens that door with five shots. He's about to say live dialogue right now. Stay clear of the door. But if I look at it, it only hey, takes two for bastards. some reason, which is knock, cool. Knock. So that saves quite a few seconds, because as you'll see in between these shots, it takes quite a while. So there is the next shot, and... Into the final fight we go. Will our Spectre be there, is the question. Spectre is there. Nice. So I have to kill a teammate. The sword guy does not matter there. He does not enter this vehicle. Now here comes a pretty interesting trick. So I get Sergeant Johnson into the Spectre, and the game doesn't recognize him as being there. So Sergeant Johnson needs to be in the final fight in order for it to progress. Like he's a main character in it. So what's gonna happen? You'll have to wait and find out. It takes a few seconds. And it makes two more Johnsons. Now the exact reason behind two Johnsons spawning isn't 100% known, I don't believe. Unless somebody has actually like found out the science to it. But I believe it to be, I was in the hitbox of where he was going to spawn, so it instantly spawned the next one. So we're on the final boss. Um, we're getting close to time, but not yet. And hopefully I don't die on this fight. Looking like a sub 2 right now. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like the Spectre is blocking the Johnson clones from hitting him, kind of. And also, one is not in a good spot, but now he is, so that makes everything better. Alright, time is coming up in just about 10 seconds. I'll call out time. And time. Really solid run. Congrats. All right, nice. That was a 158.27. All right, nice. Sub two. Sub two, even with a really bad Cairo and regret, is really, really nice. It means that run could have been absolutely ridiculous because that was a 20-minute regret. I usually save 10 minutes on that. So that was Halo 2. Thanks for watching. Uh, I guess we're probably. Ahead of estimate now because 220. Yeah, I think we're a little ahead of schedule. Yeah, yeah. It'll be fine. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Appreciate it.